Hello there. <clears throat> I'm Scotty. You're not. Uh, welcome back to Halloween Horror Month. We're looking at the 90s sci-fi Canadian classic, Cube. This is a first time watch for me. Um, and it might be a little bit high on my 31 of 31. This is going to go into 31 of 31. I will explain what that is. Well, you... I probably would have already explained it because it's in, uh, so, much like Flatliners, this is going into 31 and 31. I'll explain what that is uh, in another video, which would already have happened, so you should already know what it is, but I'm not going to say what it is until I do that video. So, watching these, you should figure out when I did that, but... It's got to be sometime soon, sometime next week, or this coming week, because October approacheth, and so I have to, yeah. So Cube is a movie, it's a sci-fi horror film, I classify it as sci-fi horror, but it's just a sci-fi film. There's gore, and if there's gore in your movie, then to me that is horror, right? So it's a sci-fi horror movie. It's about a group of people trapped in this cube. That you can only go in certain rooms. If you try to go in other rooms, there are traps. And they have to survive. This was a very cheaply made film. It had one set. One set. The cube you see in this, that they're in, it's only one set. They seem to move from one to another, but really, it's just one set. They build like a half a cube, but it, you know, it's a whole cube. They just move. You can either change the tiles, like I missed the Gigi's video. He said that they change out the tiles, but to me, it just seems like simple lighting, right? They just do different lighting on the outside, right? Wouldn't that be cheaper to do than having different panels? I don't know. Um, but it was directed by Vincenzo Natale is Autografsky is on this. It's it's not it's probably his, but it's not worth anything. This is the signature series, so his signature's on it. And I was shocked to find that this isn't the actual cover. I don't know why I thought it was. Uh but Jason for Sinister Cinema, I was well, I'm I'm started watching his video. I had to do my review. Uh, so I watched Mr. Gigi's review. Now I'm doing mine. I started his while I was getting ready to do this, uh, Jason's. But yeah, so it there actually is a copy that has the full thing, which would have been nice, but this is fine. Uh, so yeah. So let's talk about the cast. Okay, the cast of this. I think I actually need this to read the cast. I'm not thinking about it. So, we start with Nicole De Boer. De Bear. Some Star Trek fans might know who she is. She plays Levin in this. Every single one of them are named after some kind of prison. I'm not going to try to remember what they are, but Levin. And, well, there's one I do know. Levin, as well as Worth, played by David Hewlett. The, their names combined together make Leavenworth, which is a prison. And that's the only one I know. We have... Wayne Robson. You may know as Mike from... Uh, Red Green Show. As... Lens? Lens? Men, men, whatever, he's a French name. Uh, he's killed off pretty fast in this. And then we have Maurice Dean Wint as Quentin. Named after San Quentin Prison. That one I knew too. Um, but then you have Andrew Miller playing Kazan. Not Kazam, no Shaq Genie, Kazan. 
That's why I'm assuming that Nikki Guadagni is um, Helen. Uh, so heads up. Uh, and during this review, I might ask that Nick called Worth Rodney. Because David Hewlett, who played Worth, was Rodney in the Stargate show. So if I accidentally call him Rodney, then that's why. There's one other character. So I knew specifically three actors in this movie. David Hewlett, Wayne Robson, or Robson, whatever you pronounce it, and Julian Richings. Now Julian Richings is the guy that's on the cover. I'm not getting it again. He's on the cover. That guy is only in the opening of this movie. It's The opening was designed to show you what this cube is capable of for leading into the uh, rest of the movie. All it is, you got Julian Richings' character. He's in this cube. He tries to escape, and he gets cut in half by the next cube because he didn't know. And then we follow our main characters. We start with Quentin first. While Rodney, see I told you, Worth is unconscious laying in this cube. Eventually they are joined by H Helen, who is kind of thrown in by Quentin, because he doesn't know really what's going on. And uh, Levin, who shows up and it seems to be smart. Now she has to contain with broken glasses. And let me tell you, as someone who has worn glasses for well over 20 years, um, you just get a scratch on these things. It's hard. You get a smudge on it. Like this would bug the hell out of me. That cracks on it. It's going to be hard as hell to watch, to see. A piece of her, his glasses are missing. Like a, like a triangle is missing from her glasses the entire time. I don't know how she will able to concentrate with that, but yeah. Eventually, we meet Wayne Robson's character, and he's this guy who claims to know how to defeat these things and know how to move and so like I said I knew three characters two of them are killed off three actors in this and two of them are killed off almost right away one was Julian Richards the other one is Wayne Robson who after you know telling him you gotta you know pay attention to what's ahead of you he jumps in the next room and gets killed by acid Although, I have an issue with this because the next time, later in the movie, as they're trying to navigate, they end up back in that room and nothing happens. And at first I was like, oh, that's the room they started in. But no, because then the next one, they end up back in the room they started in. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh... So, before I go any further in this movie, I liked the movie. I'll tell you this right now, I liked the movie. I had an issue with the ending. The ending, to me, is bullshit. I have an issue because it just doesn't make any sense. There's two different ways it doesn't make any sense, and I'll get to it, but it just doesn't make any sense why it happens. It happens, so only one character escapes and we don't even get to see where it goes which is fine it leaves the mystery but that's not what i have a problem with there's something else anyway uh during their travels the 11 figures out that it has something to do with prime numbers although halfway through the movie that changes they find what wikipedia lists is autistic person known as kazan Tell you what, this actor is very good at playing a handicapped person. But, um, can we stop portraying autistic people as very mentally handicapped? There are some of us that are very capable of moving around and acting normal. I don't, I, I've, I've seen a lot of, I've seen quite a few. Look at the kid from Predator. That was more faithful than this. I mean, come on. Now, I had to, now, some of this stuff, like noises, he doesn't like red, which he and I would not get along, but because I love red. He would freak out from my microwave toaster and 
um, can opener. You're talking about DVDs. He would not. He doesn't like red. You know. Even later, uh, when Rodney promises gumdrops, he's like, "No red ones. I don't like the red ones." I'm like, "This guy, red's the best color." You know what I mean? See, I touched the glasses, and now it's smeared, and it's bugging me. See what I mean? I won't be able to do that. I also would not be able to do what Kazan could do, because he is what is called an autistic savant, so he's one of the smart ones. I don't know shit. Okay, I won't be able to get through this. There's no way. I know whatever I learned it in school, but there's no way I'd be able to help them navigate this. You know, because now it's factors. And no, not the place with the food, but factors. You know, he's helping them get through. Uh, so we're led to believe we are we are supposed to think that there's something up with Rodney because the way he's acting, he's acting like a jerk for most of it. We find out that he helped construct the outer shell of the cube. He didn't know what he was doing it for. He just did. You got Quentin questioning everyone here. And here's the thing. I didn't trust him from the very beginning. It maybe it's the actor's presence. Or maybe it's the way he just held himself. Or maybe it's the fact that his hands were covered in blood the first time we saw him. Now, I assume this meant that he had been in here for a while. And thus had been around other people. But... You know, sort of like um, in Supernatural, when it's reve revealed in the end of the season finale that Lily had actually been, or not Lily, what's her name? Ava. Ava had been, you know, battling other of those psychic kids, psychic people, you know, yellow eyes, psycho kids, whatever. And she's been killing them off one by one using her psychic powers. I thought that would be revealed, but no, he's just an asshole, and it's implied that he's abusive and likes young girls. I don't know. There's there's no real, like, you think in a movie like this, you would do one of those things, like what Saw does, where we see them trying to travel through this and get through it, but we flash back to their normal lives. Also, like, Lost, too, but we don't. We don't get any of their personal lives other than we know that Rodney worked or worth, excuse me, worked in an office. You know, Helen's a doctor. We know that Levin, despite being played by someone in her mid-twenties, is a teenager in school. And we know, supposedly, that Quentin used to be a cop. But we don't know anything else. We also know that he is divorced. But after going through this movie, I'm pretty sure it was his fault. Uh, but yes. So... We come to my first problem with the movie. They get to the edge and where the outer shell is. And it's completely black. To what appears to be an endless void. How could there be an endless void if Rodney built the outer shell? There has to be. If there is an outer shell, there has to be an ending to it. Now, we don't know how big this thing is. But there has to be a bottom. Also, I have an issue with how they do this. They, they dangle Helen because she's the lightest one outside. They put string together all their jumpsuits so that she can go out there. But they're hanging on to like half of the thing. Why? Wouldn't it be easier if you... All held on to one of the shirts, stood close to the thing, using the thing to balance yourself, and then had her hang as far as she can to see how far down it goes. She's not going to get that far if you all are holding on to half of the, the, the jumpsuits. And then the thing starts to shake and move because we find out that the rooms are constantly moving. Quentin goes to pull her up, but then after just having an argument with her, she he's like, nah, fuck it, and drops her. Like, she called him a Nazi. He's black, so I don't think it works that way. I mean, there were sympathizers, but I don't think it works that way. 
I'm pretty sure Nazis would not want to be around black people. Um, I'm assuming. I know they didn't like Jews, but or sorry, Jews. I mean, duh. They didn't like Jews, but I'm pretty sure they were racist against everyone of a different color too. So I, I, I don't know. I'm focusing on the word Nazi too much, but it just. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so she dies. And then eventually it's funny. He did it on purpose. We know that. They find it out. And so this is where it gets to the point. Then they start to figure out where they have to go. They start working their way. But they... Rodney has an argument with him. They have to fight. Uh... He throws Rodney down to the next one, and there's no, uh, it's worth, but I keep calling him Rodney, because it's what I'm going to call him, uh, into the next one, he starts laughing, and crazed, <laughs> because they landed back in the cube where, uh, Wayne Robson died, so, is it, pen, pens, pens, pens? But he died with the, with the acid. And so it's all, they've gone all the way back in a circle again. And uh, after another altercation, they decide to leave him behind. This thing is moving. He gets thrown. He tricks him to have him fall down, locks him. They go into the one that was safe. And then the thing moves. They're trying to find a bridge, a one that will connect to the outside. They realize that there is one that it will be a bridge and it connects to the outside. And did you know which one connects to the bridge? The one they started in. Right. So they left Quentin behind. They moved. The whole thing moved a couple of times. And then they got to the bridge. They're in the one that's in the bridge. And this... So we have Levin, Rodney, and Kazan. Before we do that, let's go back to probably one of the best scenes in this movie, even with the ending of it. So they find a cube, one of the cubes, where the trap is sound activated. And th this is, you went tense? Th that was tense! To quote Jake Johnson from The Mummy, the shitty remake one. The second shitty, the second remake that was shitty. The, the Tom Cruise one. First one was like, the first remake is actually pretty good. Anyway, so they cannot make a sound. Keep in mind, they have an autistic man who shouldn't, you know, a handicapped person shouldn't be able to control his sound, but he does at first. Uh, but it's Quentin that gets put down there, so, you know, cares. But he comes down and, uh, so when they get down there, Kazan gets his, he's not, they're not wearing shoes by this point because they're using sho the shoes to, um, to, to, uh, search for traps. So, um, he gets his foot on there. I think he bumps his foot and he goes, and the hound's like, Shh, before she dies. So he doesn't say a word. He gets the other side. Quentin comes down. And then, uh, I don't remember how it happens. Oh, the, the door starts to, the dan handle, because he, he, uh, Kazan turned the handle. So it starts to turn back, making noise. Quentin jumps back up. And this, he's safe, but Kazan goes, Ha! And it nearly kills him, which causes... And it nearly gets him, which causes Quentin to freak out, of course. So, let's get to the part I don't like. They get to this last one, which is the bridge to the end, to the outside. There's this white light in the next room, everything. They know that this could change at any minute. So, of course, this is the time that Rodney has a moment of 
guilt. And he just kneels down and he's like, go on without me. And Levin says, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. We can all get out. There's nothing out there for me. A meaningless existence, there's nothing. And while he's having this guilt trip, you hear a noise in the back, but you don't really know what's going on. And then Living gets stabbed to the back. Because some fucking how Quentin has made it to them. Bull motherfucking shit. There is no fucking way he found them. There is no way. Keep in mind that it changed twice since they threw him in that one room. Also keep in mind, he now has to figure out which direction. If he if he goes in that direction, you know, he, if, even if he goes back up or whatever it was, you still got to figure out which direction they went. It could be any direction. And I know that when it switched, it could switch him back. But it makes no sense. There is no way, no way he would find them. It's just there. So we can have a final confrontation with him. And we can have the death, which he thought is actually decent. But we can... It kill. These three are the three you want to see survive. They have worked their ass off for the entire film. Once Helen is dead and they get rid of him, they work their ass off to find this bridge. For what? So that they can both get killed off and Kazan can go off to God knows where? It just... It pisses me off. This ending pisses me off. So what happens is, Levin, Levin dies, and Kazan, or, or Kazan walks into the, the thing. He gets out, but uh, Rodney and they have a fight. He mortally wounds Ron, Rodney. Quentin does. Quentin goes to escape, but one of his legs is still in there, and Rodney is holding it as the thing switches. And it kills him. And Rodney lays down next to Levin to die. Now, the way that uh, Quentin dies is pretty cool. Although you see, all you see is like a, a two-generated uh, CG blood smear. smear. No, a CG blood smear. But it, the idea of that is still working. I don't really had a cheap budget. Movie ends with Kazan walking into the light. And credits. Now, I like the fact that we don't know... Well, we don't know if he actually survived or not, but we don't know what's on the other side. I like that. Here's my issue. It should have been all three of them. All three of them worked their asses off to get there. Only for two of them to fucking die? No. And if you want to go to a route, have the existential crisis for Rodney, but ha instead of having him stab Levin from behind, have uh, have him jump out and attack them. Levin gets to the other side, but Rodney is forced to stay behind and hold his leg, so it smears him, and he gets stuck back in the thing, unable to find him. He can be mortally wounded, but he's left behind. Still alive, you can say he gets out, but then the other two walk. You know, you could have him be mortally wounded, and then he lays there. He says something like, go! I'm not getting out anyway. Something like that, you know? Just something different than he has an existential crisis so that we can spend more time here, and then he shows up. It still doesn't make any sense that he shows up, but I'm still going to give this a pretty, 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 pretty good, because I didn't try it. The ending is really the only thing I don't like. Oh, and, you know, the two out of the three character actors that I knew from this die. And all three of them do, actually. All three. But two of them die right away. One of them doesn't die later. So all three of the actors I knew from this die. Well, you know. I thought it was good. There's, apparently there's a sequel, which I hear is terrible. And a prequel, which makes no sense, because if Rodney helped build the thing, how was there one before? 
I guess maybe an experimental one. I don't know. If Jigsaw could have two traps before the first fucking movie. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts on Cube? Leave me a couple of them. Should like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.